It's your brain, and we'll show you how to use it to control your machine. Delivering data to desktop or set-top, we'll take an inside look at the latest in DVDs. Are you ready for some football? football games, that is. Our own John C. Dvorak reviews the hottest in desktop gridiron action. Plus, we'll test out the next generation of web phones and explain the differences in video monitors. And the latest troubles to hit America online and a look at the coolest music sites on this week's Best of the Web, right now on CNET Central. Now, from the number one on-air and online information source for the digital age, this is CNET Central. Hi, I'm Richard Hart. And I'm Gina St. John. Welcome to CNET Central. In the 25-odd years since the first computer mouse was created, it seems everyone has tried to build a better mouse device. Trackballs, joysticks, even foot pedals are all used to transmit commands from the brain to machine. But what if nothing more than a mere thought could move a cursor or scroll a page? Legend has it that Albert Einstein said we use only 10% of our brain. Well, a company called The Other 90% has figured out a way to harness the extra brain power to control your computer. Someday this technology could be used to choose your own ending to a movie or help the disabled do basic chores around the house. Go ahead, think this bowling ball down the lane. Think, strike, and it just might happen. Mind drive is the first step toward beginning to use the other 90% of our brains. This is Mind Drive. The creators say it's the first computer product operated by human thought. It reads those thoughts with a small sensor that fits on your finger. And in your finger is a composite of neural activity. In addition, your heartbeat is there, and your blood pulse volume, and your temperature is there. Well, we have found a way to decipher all those signals. Ron Gordon has spent seven years researching and developing Mind Drive. The sensor sends bioelectric signals to an interface that plugs into any PC. Right now, the device helps you run computer games by thinking left brain or right brain. <laughs> Someday, you might get to think your own ending to movies. Miramax Films has licensed the technology. We're going to branch out into an area of film nobody else has tried, which is to say a true interactive film. And a film not only that's interactive, but that works off of your thoughts. You're tense, your character doesn't get over the bridge. You use your left brain, you're going to get around that corner. Uh, you relax a little bit, you escape detection in that spy thriller. Miramax plans to have a short film on its website by the first part of 1997. Eventually, you'll find interactive films on Laserdisc and in theaters. Then you can decide whether Jackie Chan ought to hit them high or hit them low. In a mind drive movie, the filmmaker will still determine the path, but there might be seven or eight different paths. And depending on your state of mind, the day when you watch it, you'll go down a different path. The sensor operates sort of like a lie detector. The game Fib is a fun way to check out how it works. You choose an object, then lie about what you picked. What about the football? No. Did you pick the baseball? No. The meter at the bottom of the screen usually gives you away. Did you pick the basketball? No. You picked the basketball? Yeah. One day, this technology could be much more than just fun and games. It also might be used to help people with disabilities. Easter Seals wants to take the technology further to possibly use it for uh, operating computers, controlling functions in the home, operating wheelchairs, and we'll be working with them toward that. Gordon admits the technology must be perfect before it can be used for wheelchair control. Right now, it's still an entertainment product where mistakes don't matter much. But if Ron Gordon's dream became a reality, who knows what is possible? If everything we've accomplished on this planet comes from 10% of our brain, imagine what would be possible if we had another 5%. The Mind Drive hardware sells for about $140, and the software titles will cost you from $25 to $40. Bucks. If you want to find out more about the technology behind all this, point your web browser to 3 wsother 90com 
The way you store information on your computer and watch movies on TV may be changing soon, all because of a new technology that is poised to take the electronics world by storm. Reporter Hari Srinivasan is here with more. Hi, Hari. Howdy. Now, this looks like a CD and acts like a CD, but these days, that doesn't mean it is one. These are DVDs, digital versatile discs or digital video discs, a new medium for storage that can hold tons more information than the CD and the CD-ROM. Let's put this all in perspective. CD-ROMs today can hold up to 650 megabytes of information. That's about 500 floppy disks worth of words, sounds, and pictures. But the first generation of DVD-ROMs will be able to hold 4.7 gigabytes. That's equal to more than seven CD-ROMs or more than 4,000 floppy disks worth of stuff. How is this possible? Well, the data on CDs and CD-ROMs is stored in tiny pits on the disk that we can't see with the naked eye. DVD technology uses smaller pits in more closely spaced tracks and better lasers to read this tightly bunched information. You'll see the first differences in programs like this phone book software that contains every registered phone number in the United States. It uses six CD-ROMs to store all that information, but all of that stuff would fit on one single DVD with room to spare for Puerto Rico. You'll need a special DVD-ROM player for your computer to run these new discs, but they'll also run all your existing CD-ROMs and CDs. The storage gains are even more significant when it comes to multimedia information. With today's CD-ROM, most video is small in size, and it's herky-jerky on the screen. It's not smooth at all, because video takes enormous storage capacity. But with a DVD disc, you'll get full screen, full motion video with Dolby surround sound stereo quality which means a DVD may also play a significant role in what many see as the ultimate convergence of television and computer. The new discs promise better audio and video quality in today's VHS and laser discs in a more convenient format, i.e. they're smaller and you don't have to get up and flip them so often. They'll also be designed to take advantage of new high-definition TV capabilities. If this does become the video storage medium of the future, that means scanning for your favorite videos may start looking more like a trip to today's record stores. 20 years ago, these aisles would have been full of LPs. 10 years ago, full of cassette tapes. Now, the LPs and cassettes are in a pretty small portion of the store. Will the DVD do to video what CDs have done to music? Over time, clearly it has its benefits over VHS. Um, clearly, the consumer electronics companies really want it to succeed. So, it's probably going to happen. The question is when. The technology is scheduled to keep improving. There are already plans for double-layered and double-sided DVDs, which could hold up to 8.5 gigabytes worth of data. So, Hari, when will we start seeing these DVDs in the stores? Well, right now, there's sort of a catch-22 situation. Software developers and movie studios won't start putting their products on DVD until enough people have the players. But the hardware companies won't mass manufacture the players until there are enough movies and software discs available. Okay, now tell me about the prices on these. Now, the DVD-ROM drive should be about $250 to $300. The DVDs for your entertainment system, they should be about $1,000. But as with most new technologies, prices will probably drop dramatically within about six to eight months. Well, we hope do. Thank you so much. Don't go away because when we come back, the world's largest online service finds itself in hot water with subscribers. And get your football fixed during the off season. It's our pigskin preview of the latest gridiron games.